Hey Rocketeers, in this video we're going to talk about breathing. How to breathe when you swim. We'll address this a few different ways. We'll address it how to breathe in front of you for the ultra beginner. We'll, we'll address how to breathe on your back and we'll address how to breathe to the side. The first way to breathe in front of you is a pretty simple method. When you breathe, you pick your head up in front of you and then you put your head back down. Now, the mistake most beginners make is when they pick their head up, they leave it up even though they drop back into the water. Here's what I mean. Once you've got your breath, you wanna put your head down in the water. You kinda of wanna dive your forehead Forward. It should look like this. Breathe, head down. Breathe, head down. Breathe, head down. Because your head is like the steering wheel of a car. Wherever your head goes, your body follows. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Once I pick my head up, the rest of my body is going to sink. So in order to resurface, I'm going to have to put my head back down in order to get my body back up. So I breathe, and then I got to put my head down below my arms. When you breathe on your back, you need to have your chin up, your forehead back, and you need to relax your muscles in the water. Pretend like you're laying on a waterbed. Your muscles are relaxed, chin is up, forehead back, kicking ever so slightly. If you're gonna be using your arms, you can use your arms. But the trick is to keep your lungs three quarters to a full tank of air. Never let your air drop below half a tank. Always keep enough air in your lungs to float your body and to keep it up near the surface. Here's what I mean. Right now, I'm full of air. I'm only gonna let out three quarters, maybe a half, and then I'm gonna bring it right back in. Because if I let out more than half my air, I'm gonna end up sinking. I'm sinking. You gotta keep your lungs full of air to keep your body up near the surface. That's how you breathe when you're on your back. Now, lastly, breathing to the side. Now this is the trickiest one. It's also the most efficient one because your head stays in line with your spine and with the rest of your body so you can continue moving forward. Things in motion tend to stay in motion. It's easier to keep a good body line and to stay in motion than it is to pick your head up, put your head down, pick your head up, put your head down. And it's more, it's more efficient and faster to be breathing to the side on your belly than it is just to keep your head up on your back. Now, keeping your head up on your back might be easier, but it's not as fast. So, when you breathe to the side, there's a couple of things you need to be sure of. First, you need to be sure to exhale in the water, so when it's time to breathe to the side, all you have to do is inhale. If you wait till you turn to the side and exhale and inhale at the same time, you're gonna run out of time before your arm comes down crashing over your mouth. So you need to cut that time in half by exhaling in the water, inhaling to the side. Here's what I mean. Okay, now, pick your favorite side. For me, my favorite side is to breathe to the right. Some of you prefer to breathe to the left, others prefer to the right. Pick your favorite side. Some coaches out there, they'll teach you to breathe every three strokes so that you're breathing to both sides, keeping your body balanced. I don't like that. I like you to pick your favorite side, breathe every two strokes. That way you're constantly breathing, you're never really having to hold your breath in. Because when you hold your breath, that makes you tired more quickly. So, breathe every two strokes. When you breathe to the side, right before you do, exhale in the water, okay? Exhale, breathe. Exhale, breathe. Now, the next trick. Breathe to the side as you pull the arm backwards. Okay, it's like your thumb and your hand are connected with a string. When you pull, that's when you start your breath. Now, there I was just using one arm. You can use both arms. You can breathe to one side, three strokes, other side. I just don't recommend it. I prefer breathing every two strokes. Now, the third trick to breathing to the side is kind of breathing a little bit behind you, okay? Don't breathe 
up here in front of you to the side, but rather behind you. And that's because your mouth is on your chin, not your forehead. So if you lift your forehead up, your chin can drop, and now your mouth is in the water and you're gonna choke on water and that's not comfortable. Instead, breathe a little bit behind you so that your forehead drops into the water more, causing your chin to pop out. Remember, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. If my forehead's going down, my chin's coming out. It makes it easier to breathe, okay? So, breathe a little bit behind you, breathe when you take your pull, and breathe right after you exhale. Right back here. A lot of beginners will also lift their head up because they're trying to get that air. Don't lift your head up so high. Try to keep it near the surface of the water because if you lift your head up, you're gonna end up sinking. You would much rather keep your head near the surface of the water so your body stays right there at the surface. Rotate your body as well. If you try to breathe to the side with just your head, it's gonna be very uncomfortable and your neck is gonna restrain you from being able to get a nice clear breath of air. Instead, rotate your entire body to the side so your shoulders and your chest open up a window for you to breathe in. Okay, here's what I mean. I'll do a few strokes, I want you to watch. So you'll see that I breathe every two strokes, I'm blowing my bubbles out in the water, and I'm breathing to the side with my entire body, slightly behind me as well. My head stays near the surface, it doesn't come up too high. Finally, I wanna reiterate how important it is to breathe every two strokes and not take 10 strokes per breath. Some adults will, will, will put too much emphasis on that breath. So they're swimming, they're swimming, they're getting tired, oh my gosh, I need air, I need air, and then they breathe and, and they need so much air that they have to take two or three breaths and then they're, they lose the rhythm and then they end up sinking or having to stop and restart. There's no need for that. It should be like walking or riding a bike. You don't hold your breath when you walk, you don't hold your bike when you run, you don't hold your breath when you're riding a bike, you just breathe. Same thing in swimming. You don't need to be holding your breath for multiple strokes and then take a huge breath of air. Rather, continue the breath cycle by exhaling in the water, inhaling to the side. Exhale, inhale. And that is how you breathe in the water. Well, Rocketeers, that's all I have for you today. If you're interested in your own private lessons in person or online, then head over to our website. Follow us over on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and support the channel by contributing to our Patreon. Links are in the description below. We give out a t-shirt on each platform every month. If you found this video helpful, splash that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you want to be the first to see these videos as soon as they're published, then turn on the bell notifications. If you practice it, let us know how it goes in the comments. We'll respond to everyone. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Now get ready to rock it.